All right, let's talk about Charles Oliveira. Is he having a meltdown, you guys? Has he completely melted down? Has this guy lost it? Has he snapped, finally, because he didn't want to fight Islam Makashev at UFC 283? Now, how exciting would that have been? I mean, uh, before I even get into whether or not I think he's completely melting down, what's going to happen as a result of him turning down this fight? What's up next in the 155 division? And, uh, and all that, I want to say this. I'm upset as a fan, you know, like just as a purely selfish person who has no regard for anyone except myself, certainly not Charles Oliveira. I'm mad, dude, because I would have loved it. Dude, we got 282 right around the corner. Imagine if 283 were going to get a rematch of Islam Makashev against Charles Oliveira. Like, come on, dude. Come on. That's a big fight, dude. That is a big, big boy fight. But Charles turned it down, dude. He turned it down because he's apparently, uh, you know, he's got he's he's having stress was the uh, was the word from his coach. He has too much too much emotional too much emotional stress or something along those lines. So we'll talk about that super quick. There's no sponsor on this video, you guys, except for Jesse on everything. My other channel is blowing up, son. I don't know why I never did this before. But I found a way to sneak a Jesse on everything uh, video into the, my channel yesterday. The one I did about Jake Shields and Balenciaga. It's blowing up, dude. I'm going to hit 20,000 subscribers over there probably by the end of the weekend. And I am ecstatic. So if you don't follow my other channel, you definitely should. It's super fun. I just did a video today about the Liver King scandal. The Liver King. He's been exposed for doing PEDs and lying about it. And I got a big time hot take on that and on the rats that narked him out. So give that a run after you watch this video. That should be the first thing you do. I'll probably, uh, I'll put a link to it in the, uh, in the comments and I'll pin it. But also, as we always say on every one of these videos, although new people would know, the deal is you can watch as much of my content as you want, but the jar at the front of the, you know, of the store is you have to hit the subscribe button. It's the honor system, dude. I do this, I work my balls off on these channels, man. I work super hard. And honestly, subscribing is not even going to, do, it's just like you click it, you'll never see me ever again if you don't want to. It just tells the, uh, you know, tells the, tells the you know who's that people like my stuff. It's very, very helpful and it doesn't cost you anything and I really appreciate it. And if you really want to see me all the time, then you click the bell and get all notifications and then we'll get down like a clown, Charlie Brown. We'll get real intimate. So speaking of intimate though, uh, Charles Oliveira and Islam Makashev have been face to face on the ground. Islam triangle arm triangle choked him. I've heard that his arm triangle choke is bananas. And I watched a uh, speaking of Jake Shields from yesterday. I watched a instructional on BJJ Fanatics uh, where um, Jake Shields showed how he does it. And I tried it on someone today, and they were like, "Bro." They're like, that's soul crushing. Go watch it. It's great. Forget I even said that. Watch Jesse on everything. Don't watch any other videos. Just watch this one, then Jesse on everything. But anyway, so, you know, these guys, they just fought. It's an amazing fight. But I think that the, I don't know, the, the word on the street on Charles Oliveira, they're like, how could he have turned this fight down? He just got an opportunity to get his belt back. He turned it down. Why? Why would he have done that? Emotional stress? What does that even mean? You know, emotional, emotional stress. Like. What fighter says emotional stress? I'll tell you exactly which one. One that doesn't speak English. You know, like one that doesn't speak English. Because I get, well, I'm not going to say I guarantee, but I'm going to hypothesize on exactly what happened here, which would have been probably that what they were saying was he's not ready to go back into a training camp right now. You know, like he's probably saying like he can't handle all of the pressure and stress of, a, of another fight camp right now. You know, like that's, I, I would, I would, you know, I'll not bet my life or anything. I don't know his life, but just gauging off of the number of years that I've been watching the sport and the things that people say in English, you know, like the only difference between Charles Oliveira and all the English speakers is just that he speaks Portuguese. Like there, he's still a human being, same emotions, all of that stuff. So like, I guarantee it's just like, like a fight camp is, is serious, dude. You know, it's serious. I'm sure that he wants to be able to like eat food for a while, you know, like just eat whatever food he wants. Just, just food. How about just food? Not to mention training two times a day. And then, you know, not, to, and it being the hardest fight 
that you could possibly give the guy, and he knows it now, you know? So I'm going to guess that this was taken out of context or lost in translation, and what he meant by that was he's just not ready to dive straight back into a, uh, you know, a fight camp, and that's what the anxiety and stress was associated with. But that being said, <clears throat> I, I think that it's a not excellent decision because – you had that right there. That's your guaranteed rematch. Now, I another thing I can tell you unequivocally, as a uh, as avid a viewer as there has ever been, and as much of a news consumer as there has ever been, if Dana offers you a fight that he wants you to take and you turn it down, he makes you pay for that. He makes you pay for that, dude. You know, like I, I, now maybe Charles Oliveira has banked enough goodwill with them that he has the ability to say, like, no, you know, I'm not ready. I don't want to fight. But Dana does not like that, you know, if he, especially because it would be such a big fight. If he offers someone a fight that he knows would be big and they don't take it, he does not like that. He doesn't like it at all. And so, you know, it, it, it puts him in a tough spot because he's not guaranteed to have, like he has, he's definitely not guaranteed to have an immediate title shot. If he, you know, when he comes back, if he's like, oh, I'll be ready to go in uh you know, whatever, like, oh, what's 282 going to be in like January or something, you know, I'm not ready in January, but I'll be ready in June. He's like, okay, well you can fight Fiziev in June or you could fight like, you know, fill in the blank, dude, fill in the blank. As a matter of fact, let me, let me just do this. Uh, let's just do this together. You guys, we're going to, we're going to do a, we're going to have like a little visual aid here for, for you me and everyone else who's watching this. You know what I'm saying? Right now. Boop. So, whoop. There we go. All right. So, looking at these rankings, it's like, hang on. So, you got Islam Makashev, Charles Oliveira, Dustin Poirier, Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier, Justin Gaethje, Darius. Man, if they really wanted to be a prick, they could give him Darius. Chandler, Fizev, Rafael Dos Anjos. Listen, I can see a scenario where they give Chandler a rematch against Oliveira. I could absolutely see that because that would position uh, Chandler to potentially have another title shot or have another title shot. I and believe, oh man. The UFC would love to do Chandler against Islam Akshev. I don't really see, I don't see Oliveira fighting anyone below six. And he's already beat Dustin, Justin, and Chandler. But Chandler, that's a, that's a rematch that they would make because Chandler was so dominant in the first round. Fizayev, they might, they might do. I don't see him fighting anyone below that, you know, but the other thing is you got this dude, you know, you guys might remember this guy over here, Alexander Volkanovsky. So, you know, uh, there's a, you know, I mean, the odds, the odds that Volkanovsky beats Islam are not like, are not zero. You know what I mean? And so if, if Volkanovsky wins, then maybe, you know, maybe, I don't know. I mean, it's, let me think about that actually. So if, if Volkanovsky beats, if Volkanovsky beats Islam, where does that leave Charles? I guess it depends on what else has happened in the division since then, but I actually think that might put Charles in a very good position to get the next title shot against Volkanovski. I actually think that that's probably exactly what would happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, bottom line is, now he's not going to get a title shot, at least immediate. Uh, I wonder when they're going to do Islam versus Volkanovski. And it's also really surprising. I thought that fight was done. I thought it was a... I thought Volkanovski and Islam was a done deal, and I guess it's not. So it is what it is, dog. It is what it is. But look, you want to see something else? Let me show you something else really quick, okay? So super quick, here's, here's one more thing for everybody to consider when deciding whether or not to chastise, chastise our boy, okay? Have a look-see at, have a gander at this. So Oliveira fought. He fought October 22nd, he fought May 7th, he fought December 1st, okay? So, in, you know, he fought three times in a year, right here. 
That's a lot of fights, dude. Like, that's a lot of fights. Three fights in a year. So he fights in December. Uh, he takes some damage. You know, he takes a couple months off. And then he's training for, for a February, or for, I'm sorry, for a May fight camp. He's starting, I mean, depending, I don't know, eight weeks. Like, so let's say he's starting in February. I mean, like, so he got a couple months off at the most. He wins here. So May, June, July, August, September, October, five months. So he got a few months off here, but like, you know, that's a lot of fighting and that's a lot of media when you're the champion. So him wanting a little bit of a a break, I totally understand, but, but he also might not like the matchup. That's another thing you got to, you got to consider that it's possible that he's looking at the chessboard and he's like, well, maybe I like, I like the Volkanovsky matchup better. Maybe I'll let Volkanovsky go take a crack at Islam and I'll go win my belt back. And then I'll fight Islam again as the champion if, you know, whatever. Because, I mean, there wasn't a lot about that fight against Islam that that would give me a lot of confidence that I was going to beat him in the next fight. You know what I mean? I mean, just bottom line, Islam looked flawless. It's going to, uh, man, I'm, I'm, ex- I'm really excited to see what Volkanovsky and, and Islam do together. That's going to be, that's going to be a great, great fight. Anyway, I don't really, now I'm just rambling. I don't really have a whole lot more to say except for this. Thank you guys so much for all of the love and support. I genuinely mean it. I have two, like when I get on a, like a little bit of a roll, which I'm on right now, where like the video that I did on Jake Shields is, is humming yesterday, like from yesterday, it's, I added, dude, I gained a shitload of subscribers in the last 24 hours, like 400 or something like that. And, uh, and on my other channel, Jesse on everything, the one that I'm heavily promoting right now, I gained like 400 subscribers. That's the biggest day I've ever had on that channel since I started it. And I'm creeping right up to 20,000. I was so afraid. I was so afraid to just go balls to the wall on that channel because just of the topic matters, you know, like the what topic matters, the topics I talked about. I just was nervous about it. And I realized I'm like, dude, I looked around and I'm like, dude, I'm not going any harder than a bunch of these channels. I'm just going to do it, man. Like I'm, I caution the wind. I'm just going to do it. And it's gaining a lot of momentum. And that's the channel that I really love that I'm very excited about. So go give it a look, go watch the one about the liver King, watch the one I did about Balenciaga, watch the new one I'm going to do about Balenciaga because get this, the New York times. The New York Times wrote an article today that said that the Balenciaga scandal is a QAnon conspiracy theory. They called it a QAnon conspiracy theory. It's one of those things where you're like, so you're just basically gaslighting every single person who looked at this and you're banking on fooling a handful of people who haven't looked at it yet. And just like, you know, to stop the bleeding. Because, but like, talk about nuking your credibility, man. Like, no one's down with CP, bro. (laughs) Like, no one is down with CP. There's no like, oopsie, CP papers on the desk. Anyway, I'm going to do a video about that for Jesse on everything right now. Also, I love you guys. Thank you again for the support. Please like, share, comment, all of those things. I would give you the shirt off my back. I love you guys. Thank you.